Did you know that 60% of Americans want to become billionaires? This is according to the Harris Polls American and Billionaire Survey, where they ask you as adults representing different generations from Gen Z to millennials to Gen X and boomers. I mean, who wouldn't want to become that rich, right? I think most of us do. We all dream of having luxurious homes and fancy cars and going on vacations multiple times a year without worrying about the money. Even though more than half of these adults want to be billionaires, the gap between between the rich and the poor has increased over the past decade. According to the Federal Reserve data, as of the last quarter of 2021, the top 1% of US households held 32.3% of the country's wealth. On the other hand, the bottom 50% only had 2.6% of the wealth. We don't need any more proof. Just looking at these numbers, the wealth disparity in America between the rich and the poor is too obvious. So here's the question. Why is there such a large gap between the rich and the poor despite the staggering 60% of the U.S. adults wanting to become billionaires. Shouldn't this at least lessen the gap because of the desire to do so? Please let me know what you think by leaving some comments down below. So here's what I think. People just want to become a billionaire. And after all, human beings are designed to want more. But not everyone is willing to go against what they are used to. Many resist change and others do things that are opposite of what they should do to achieve financial goals. So in today's video, I'll share with you things that you should avoid if you want to become wealthier. These things are seemingly normal and seem pretty harmless. But if you want to be a part of that top 1% these things should definitely go away. Hi, my name is Munif Ali. I'm a self-made multimillionaire who started this channel to share my life experiences so that I could teach you how to become more successful. If you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. First on our list is working for every dollar. If you're working nine to five, great. It's a mandatory 40 hour week and I have nothing against nine to five jobs. Is your pay rate equivalent to how many hours you work? If so, I have bad news for you though. If you're only working to make money and the only way is a job that requires you to render a certain amount of hours per week, then your chances of getting to a multimillionaire status is pretty slim. I'm not trying to tell you that working a full-time job is bad. They're great. If you're earning a decent amount of money, great. If you have a comfortable life, great. If you can take a vacation once in a while and not go into debt, great. When you only have a regular job and your time equals your money, not so great if you're not utilizing that money. In other words, every time you miss work, you lose a dollar. And unless, of course, you have some kind of sick leave or leave incentives in place. It would be great. My point is, it is never enough. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average salary for the U.S. employee is $54,132 per year. Let's say you're 24 now, you'll be working another 36 years and you are diligently saving 10% of your income for retirement. When you reach the age of 60, you will have a total savings of $194,875.20. That's not a small amount of money and it's still by far less than ideal. And thinking that you have worked almost your entire life, you're lucky if you are among the 5.4% of the population earning more than $150,000 a year, you'll get at least $540,000 when you retire. Thing is, it is difficult to reach an ideal life with just one job. So you need to find out what works for you. And my case, I invested. I have businesses. Others juggle multiple jobs and side gigs, but don't just rely on one job unless you're paying, getting paid a great amount. There are plenty of options available. You just need to find what works for you. There have been plenty of people who have worked for the postal office or other jobs that make less than the 54000 but they've amassed wealth by saving up their money, by diligently investing, by buying real estate, by buying stocks. So it's not just, yeah, you want to increase the amount of money you make, but also you need to understand that more importantly, you need to devise a way to invest that money. When I say save, I mean save for the fact of investing, not just getting some little teeny tiny amount from some savings plan. The whole thing is you're saving to invest. And I want to make that part clear. So great if you can make more income. And if you can't, and you've got a couple of things going, it doesn't matter as long as you're able to look at investing in a long-term way. That's all for today, guys. I hope that you learned something valuable. And if you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for more content like this one. And if you want to learn more about improving your finances, Go ahead and check out this video next five tips on how to improve your personal finance.